In this introductory tutorial, we will guide you through some of the basics of the FormZ interface, locating and then briefly explaining the functions of the menus, palettes, tools, and settings. Before we get started, we should mention that FormZ contains a modeling environment, which is three-dimensional, and a drafting environment, which is two-dimensional, each of which has its own set of tools and windows. Behind Form Z lies a principle that 3D entities and configurations are best created and represented in 3D rather than 2D. Therefore, the modeling environment is the default setting when Form Z is first launched. For this reason, we will spend the remainder of this tutorial exploring the modeling environment. However, it should be noted that the screen layout and behavior of the operations in the modeling and drafting environments are very similar to each other. Because Form Z exists on both the Macintosh and Windows operating systems, we must first explain the few slight differences between the two before we continue. All versions of FormZ Render Zone Plus are one and the same and behave identically when executing operations. However, a few differences exist in the interface of the program when it runs on Macintosh and on a Windows machine simply because there are certain features that are inherently different between the two platforms. On Macintosh, there are two additional menus located in the toolbar menu, which is displayed horizontally across the top of the screen, and that is the Apple menu and the FormZ Render Zone Plus menu. The About FormZ menu item appears in the Render Zone Plus menu, whereas it appears in the Help menu on Windows. Because Macintosh and Windows keyboards are slightly different, this affects the key shortcuts available for different operations of FormZ. The Option key is available on Macintosh, but not on Windows. The Alt key is on Windows but not on Macintosh. It should be noted that these two keys cannot be used in the same manner since the Alt key is reserved for many system operations on Windows. Another variation is that dialogues on both operating systems look different and that is because they each possess a different graphic style, but their content is identical with the exception of a small few dialogues. The few remaining differences between Macintosh and Windows platforms can be found in section 1.1 of the FormZ User's Manual. An explanation on how to access an electronic version of the manual is discussed later in this tutorial. First, we will explore the FormZ menu bar that is displayed horizontally across the top of the screen. It consists of 10 menus on Windows and 12 on Macintosh. Each menu contains a set of commands that can be selected in a standard manner and many have a keyboard shortcut that is displayed to the right. As already mentioned, these key shortcuts differ between the Macintosh and Windows platforms. We should also mention that there are four variations of menu items. The plain items execute an operation as soon as they are selected. Menu items with an ellipse, or three dots at their end, invoke dialog boxes. Those with an arrow invoke submenus while menu items with an asterisk execute operations, but also can be used to invoke dialogues that affect the operations they execute. The first menu listed at the top of the screen is the File menu. Here you can execute a variety of commands that include creating a new project, as well as opening, saving, or closing existing FormZ files. Please note that a standard save operation in FormZ saves a file to a .fmz file, while Save As saves a current .fmz file to a new file name. The Save a Copy As command allows you to backsave a .fmz file to a previous version. In addition, there are commands to import or export files in a number of formats, and commands that support printing in the bottom half of the file menu. The Import option allows you to import 2D or 3D geometry or image files. The export option saves 2D or 3D geometry to another file format such as DWG, DXF, STEP, etc. And the export image option saves an image on the screen to an image format such as TIFF, TGA, JPEG, to name a few. The second menu at the top of the screen is the edit menu. It is here that you can undo, redo, or replay operations. There are also commands that allow you to cut, copy, and paste entities from one window or project to another. Other commands include the ability to pick both ghosted and unghosted entities, 
and deleting all the objects or elements of a project. Finally, there are commands which enable you to manage FormZ's keyboard shortcuts and define the save preferences. The third menu, which is the Window menu, is where commands affecting the appearance of the FormZ window are located. Complementing the File menu, there are commands listed here that control the opening and closing of project windows. However, there are others that allow you to divide windows into multiple workspaces and turn on and turn off graphic references, namely the grids and axis. The Heights menu is next, and this menu is present only in the modeling environment. Here you can choose the height of objects you generate from a list of preset values. Instead of a preset height value, you can select Graphic Keyed, which allows to define the height of objects either interactively through graphic input or by typing a value. Additionally, there are options within the Heights menu that allow you to customize the height of the objects you create. The Views menu offers commands that allow you to manipulate the viewing parameters within the modeling and drafting environments. For example, in modeling you can change the angle at which you view your object in 3D or view it in another projection, such as from the top, front, etc. The Display menu contains items for displaying scenes, for changing the scale of the active window, interactive display items, and rendering types to name a few. Since the methods of display for the objects you create in Form Z are listed in the menu, a quick explanation is in order. The wireframe method shows all the lines or edges of objects. It is the fastest display method and is the default. The second is interactive shaded and it is an OpenGL based shaded rendering which has become more and more popular in recent years and many users make it the default. Quick Paint is intended to provide fast previews of images and not final renderings. Hidden Line produces displays where only the visible lines of a scene are shown. Surface Render produces colored renderings with shades and possibly shadows that depend on the current position of the sunlight source. Shaded Render produces high quality images, utilizing a subset of render zone rendering procedures up to a certain level. Sketch Render is a rendering post processor that can apply a variety of effects to a regular rendering and make it look like it's handmade in different ways. Doodle is also a rendering post processor that affects line drawings. It also produces images with a hand-drawn appearance. This is the most photorealistic rendering offered by Form Z. It applies a variety of advanced rendering methods such as ray trace, final gather, radiosity, etc. This concludes a brief introduction to the different display methods listed in the display pull-down menu. Items listed in the options menu invoke dialogues affecting project level settings. It should be noted that many of these dialogues can be invoked from other tools or palettes. The eighth pull-down menu is where you can open or close palettes with a single click of the mouse. Check marks indicate palettes that are active. When you first launch Form Z, 10 palettes appear on your screen in the modeling environment and 9 in drafting. Palettes are small floating windows from which a variety of different functions can be performed. Active palettes can be moved anywhere on the screen or turned off by clicking on the button located in its upper corner. Another item worth noting is that each palette has a contextual menu which is a shortcut for accessing frequently used items. It is designed to increase workflow by minimizing access to features that are available in dialogues or reduce the number of clicks required to perform a task. Accessing the contextual menu can be accomplished while pressing the control key on Macintosh or Windows while clicking the mouse. In addition to the contextual menus for the palettes, such menus exist pertaining to the modeling and drafting environments as well as any objects you create in those environments. Similarly, they are designed to increase your workflow and are accessed in the same manner.